Hi everyone, it's Anthony from Gateball Refereeing Centre. Today we're going to be discussing, arguably, or definitely in my opinion, the hardest shot in Gateball. And uh, to my knowledge, this is the first video ever made in English that describes what is known as a jump spark. Jump spark took me personally months to figure out exactly how it was done. And it's not as, as, it's not as difficult as a jump touch to do because there's not as much variability, but the technique required and the skills required take an immense amount of time to perfect. This, this will honestly take you a very long time to be able to do perfectly. You might be able to do it initially with you know erratic movement of the balls and so on and so forth, but a jump spark is probably the hardest thing you can do in gate ball. So what is a jump spark, you might ask? Uh, basically, a jump spark involves touching a ball, so ball four touches ball two. Nibani touch would say the referee. We get to pick up the two ball. I want to put this ball, you know, tight to the line near gate three. I'm just here on the first line in the uh, on the fourth line in the starting area. And uh, but the six balls in my way. I, you know, I need to spark it in this direction. But what on earth am I going to do? Well, you can jump spark. And you might think that there's no way on earth that you can possibly set the balls and get the two to jump over the six. It is possible. Uh, bats a little bit closer. I might just separate it just by a little bit there. Um, it is possible. Perhaps I'll do one first just to show you and see if you can spot what's being done. Because obviously this was, this was observed on many uh, Korean and Japanese videos, but they don't have English translations and no texts are available in English. So we, I kind of had to figure it out. There are, to my knowledge, I believe there are a few people in Australia who can do it, but there are no videos that exist describing exactly how it's done. So I'll just do it for you here, or at least attempt to do it. It is rather difficult sometimes. So that was a great jump spark. Jeez, oh boy am I happy I did that on the first time. So I jumped over the six ball. My two ball, you can't see it, it's not in the frame, but it's about six inches away from the line, right in front of gate three, at level with, uh, just beyond gate three in a, uh, in a uh, uh, gateable position. So now you're gonna ask how on earth did I do that? It looked like a normal spark in most capacities. And this is what really confused me at the beginning. The key is, where you're placing your weight on the balls, the movement of your foot on the balls once they've been set, and then likewise the angling of the stick and the strike that's needed. So, if I just grab another ball here, oh, how about I use a partner ball because we probably wouldn't be doing this with a, uh, I guess we could be, in theory we probably could be doing this with an enemy ball, but trying to get it out of bounds and to enter the outer field. The first thing we need to do is after we've made the touch, so we, we've um, we've touched we've touched ball eight uh, with ball four, and we've got to put it down exactly where I wanted to. So we step on our own ball, but I'm putting almost no pressure on this. I'm just literally not, I am actively trying to not put any weight on this ball. My foot's still in contact with it, but it's very very light, and I can still see quite a large amount of my own ball. We then place the eighth ball underneath our foot, still creating very, very little weight whatsoever. I mean, these, these balls are basically not being touched. Don't lift your foot off, but um, they're, they're not being touched in that sense. Just, my foot's just resting on them. They're not, not much weight. Um, I've got it in line with the six there. And this is where it gets a little bit hard and where, it, where you'll experience a little bit of problems at the beginning of trying to do this. You now need to put all of your weight on the touched other ball, ball eight. So I'm, I'm pushing all of my weight, you can see my knees in this direction, onto the eight ball. And my foot is almost, I mean, it's touching the 10 ball, but it's almost, I mean, it's just holding it, just. So all of my weight is on the eight ball and I'm just touching the, uh, the 10 ball, I think it's the 10 ball, uh, the four ball, sorry. All my weight is on the eight ball, just resting my foot on the four ball so that it's set. And you just get your foot 
just a little bit over. We're moving our foot just a little bit this way, just at a fraction of an inch so that we can expose a little bit more of the four, but I'm still maintaining all of my weight on the eight ball. That's the first step. This is the heart. That was the hardest bit of it. It might seem really easy, but trust me, it's not. We then take the stick, we angle it forward. We create a lot of angle in this direction with the stick because we want to strike down on it. That's why we've, we've pushed our foot over a little bit so that we can expose a large amount of the four ball or our own stroker's ball. So we've angled the stick forward and we're going to be very abrupt and you've got to be, I mean, you've got to be quite committed to it. You've got to be quite abrupt and we're going to strike down on our own ball and in theory, it should jump over. We'll see if we can do it again. And we did. Now, unfortunately, that ball went out of bounds. Um, probably should have aimed it a little bit more to the right, but we did get the jump over the six ball it is. Yep, over the six ball. Now, you will be able to start doing these after perhaps a few practice shots. Some people might get them quickly. Some people might not get them at all. The hardest thing to do with these is have control. To get it to land where I got that first two ball to land, to get it to land on an exact spot. Because you've got to create quite a bit of force with it, it's incredibly difficult to do it in short distances. And I would say, in all honesty, under about eight or nine meters, this, this might even be impossible. I haven't tested it to that point, but it, 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 it's quite difficult. It's something that you need to do over quite a long distance. Now, of course, should you be doing this with an enemy ball, you can just smash it, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna take an enemy ball here. I've got a, I, I, I'm gonna touch, pretend we'll do this properly. Angle four. Somebody touch, would say the referee. We pick up the ball. Well, I really want this three out on that far boundary. I don't want it over here. Now, obviously, I mean, it doesn't really matter an out ball is an out ball, but there are certain situations in which it would, would actually matter. So we can do our new jump touch system. Just resting my ball, just resting my foot on the four ball. Just, it's just touching it. Not much weight applied whatsoever. I put the three ball under. Just like that, I now transition my weight all onto the three ball. All my weight is on the three ball and my the, the four ball is just being touched there, just under my foot. And with this one, you can put all the power you want into it because this ball needs to be hit out. We're gonna angle the stick forward and we're gonna make a nice solid strike downwards on the four. Now you can see what happens when you screw this one up, unfortunately. I hit the six ball. Now, those balls were a little bit close together. So that's actually a really good example of what happens when this goes terribly wrong. Now, when you practice this enough, it can become an incredibly consistent stroke and it's played extremely well in Korea. This is one that's probably, arguably was developed in Korea and you can see a lot of Koreans using it. It can be used incredibly effectively, incredibly consistently, but it's something you're gonna need to practice probably more than any other shot to get really, really consistent. So I urge you to try it out now that it's available in English. Uh, you don't have to do all the hard work that I had to sit there for hours analyzing videos of how this was done and speculations in Australia as to how it was done. Uh, go out, practice it, teach some people some new skills and hopefully I'll see you doing it on a court sometime soon. Thanks for visiting the channel and see you